is a passionate philosophy professor, fitness professional, and motivational speaker. She helps strengthen the body, but she also helps strengthen the mind. The mind? The mind. For well over a decade, she has led philosophy courses within the University System of Georgia. She leads group fitness classes in Atlanta. As well as leading one-on-one personal training sessions. Let's all squat wisely with Kristen, Kristen, Kristen Hester. 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 Yes, it is squat time once again. Guys, thank you so much for listening today. I hope you've done some squats today. I hope you plan on doing some squats today. Maybe you're not a squat kind of person, and that's cool, all right? Because you might be more into yoga, and if so, today's show is just for you. We have a yoga instructor who will discuss some great topics with us, uh, some great things that she has going on. She also has her own cool podcast as well. So I trust that you will enjoy a yoga good time today. I'm not the most flexible, so I kind of have a love-hate relationship with yoga. Uh, I love yoga, but then I hate it because some of it is just too complicated for me. Um, I do appreciate the fact, though, that yoga can be very healing. If you've ever been in a car accident, and I've had my share, unfortunately, uh, not always my fault, which is great, but the times I've had car accidents and I've had to go through physical therapy, a lot of the moves that they teach you to help heal your injuries come directly from yoga. Like I was surprised I'm the very first time that I went because I had played around with yoga before because I've just, you know, dealt with back pain and, you know, certain discomforts, you know, over the years. So I kind of tried out yoga a few times, never really fully committed to it, but I had some knowledge of it just from my own limited experiences. So when I went into physical therapy, I was surprised because A lot of the things that I had to do, especially the things for my back, uh, was a direct reflection of some of the, um, you know, yoga classes or yoga DVDs that I had experienced over the years. So if you are someone like myself, if you've been thinking about yoga or if you have arthritis or if you deal with a lot of back pain issues, uh, even, you know, I work from home mainly. So, you know, I teach online my college courses in philosophy. So I'm using my hands a lot because I'm on the computer a lot. So I deal a lot with carpal tunnel syndrome. My wrist can be weak and fatigued a lot of times. So they even have yoga to help, you know, your wrist. It's just awesome. So anything dealing with stretching, you know, in all my group fitness classes, we always close out with stretching. Some of the stretches that I do are, in fact, yoga inspired uh, just because they are just that awesome. So yoga has a lot of benefits. So if you've been thinking about yoga or if you're already sold on yoga, you'll really enjoy the discussion that will come up a little bit later in the show. So definitely stay tuned and prepare to not only hear great things about yoga, but just some great wisdom for your life. That's the thing I love about my unique podcast because fitness and philosophy, they really connect and marry together quite nicely, I think. Uh, Fitness is one of those things, a lot like philosophy. People are going to have a different perspective on uh, the best stretches to do. Is yoga safe? Is it not safe? Uh, Does protein really help with muscle? Should you drink a lot of water? I mean, it's always a different opinion, a different perspective, a different outlook that someone will have on any given subject. But you see much debate within the world of fitness. You also clearly, easily see a lot of debate, obviously, um, when it comes to philosophy. But I love the fact that we bring everything back to a place of wisdom and how our health and fitness actually draws us closer to the wisdom. You know, something that I realized, I got into group fitness because like I just said earlier, I mainly work from home. And so working from home for years, I ended up picking up weight. 
And it wasn't because I was really eating crazy either. I just wasn't active. I just wasn't engaged. You know, I was just so accustomed. I was comfortable. I was at home. I was working. Life was great. But because I wasn't paying attention to my body and what I was really doing with my life outside of work, I wasn't focused on my overall health, um, my total health and well-being like I should have been. And when I got into fitness, it was the game changer for me because I had to think of a way. I said, look, if I'm going to continue to work from home, I do not want to keep gaining weight. So I'm going to have to find a way to leave the house sometimes (laughs) and keep the weight off. So my option was to go into fitness. So I studied the exams I needed to study. I passed the tests I needed to pass. And so I ended up teaching group fitness classes. But what I learned when I lost the weight, and especially during the journey while I was trying to lose the weight, I was sitting on my bike that I have downstairs. I I bought this uh, exercise bike that my dad assembled for me. And I had already gained like at least 30 pounds, if not more. Um, I was on the bike and I I was consistently, I had a personal trainer at the time. I was eating right and I was exercising consistently. But that weight was just not moving. And I remember I was on my bike and the tears just started to fall because I really realized just how much I was not paying attention. I was productive with work. I was productive with business, but I was not productive with my life, with my health. And boy, did the wisdom, you know, really, really sink in once that revelation hit me so profoundly. So that's why wisdom is a huge connection for me. That is why health and fitness is a huge connection for me. And that's why I have to bond the two together. Because when you are really paying attention, not just to the busyness of life, not just to the business side of life, but when you are also really paying attention to yourself and how you are loving yourself and how you are taking care of yourself or not taking care of yourself, that is where the wisdom you need will certainly find you. So guys, y'all got me talking. So let me go on and just transition over to this message. But please stay tuned because when we come back, we are going to have a special guest. And I want you to listen to her and I want you to learn from her. And I want you to go do some squats while this message plays. Jordis A1 Solutions has a fitness solution just for you. For your personal training needs, we serve clients who reside in Atlanta, Georgia, and nearby cities. We also help clients to achieve their goals online as well. To inquire, visit Jordis.com. Jordis is J-O-R-T-I-S. Guys, I am so excited today. I have the corporate yogini with us today, Ashley Adams. She is phenomenal. She has been practicing yoga for 10 years and also been uh, teaching it for at least three years. She is certified. She has some awesome projects coming up, a yoga retreat in the lovely Costa Rica, and she'll soon be releasing a book. So I'm going to turn the show over to Miss Ashley. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's such a wonderful introduction. Um, it's nice to to hear um, that your message is getting out there and people know what you're doing. Um, and as Christine said, I am releasing a book in the fall. Um, actually, it will be out in 90 days. I'm under deadline to get my life together and get it out there. Awesome. <laughs> um, it is going to be called Zen and the Wonder Woman Complex. I'm looking forward to that hitting the shelves and the digital shelves, if you will, as well. Um, And then our Costa Rica retreat is November 2nd through the 6th um, of this year. Um, General admission is only $350. And since this is my birthday month, uh, I am doing discounts for Costa Rica for general admission. So if you guys haven't gotten your tickets, get them. Um, I I know that we all hear about, oh, I wish I could be one of those people on a yoga retreat. Well, now you can (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So the cool thing about yoga, uh, it has so many benefits for mind, body, but most important, since you have been practicing this uh, for 10 years now and even teaching it for three, I really want to know how did your relationship with yoga even begin? 
So when it started with my practice, as far as just um, getting in there, I I wanted to get a workout that wasn't so hard on my joints, and I still wanted quick, hard, and fast, wanted to sweat it out on the mat, right. and I started taking hot yoga classes when I first started in 2006, and um, I kind of took them sporadically over the years, um, worked on my practice at home when I could, and just kind of popcorned around from studio to studio, getting a class in whenever I could. Then fast forward quite a few years and um, I had children. Um, I have a three and a five year old now. So I went from no kids to two kids in three years. And it was super, super crazy. It was not only hard on me physically, but it was hard on me, on me mentally, those hormonal changes that took place. Right. And uh, especially after having my son, um, something about that boy business is hard. It's hard on the woman's body. I'm sure there's a lot of women that um, bounce back with no problems. I was not one of them. I had some crazy postpartum. And um, it was one of those crazies that, like, I knew that something was wrong. And when I would tell other people, they'd be like, oh, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. That was a telltale sign for me that I needed to get help from somebody. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, if I can physically tell you something's not right, then something's not right because I felt like I was crazy and that I was making everybody else in my zone crazy too. Uh, so that's what brought me to being a yoga teacher. I went to the yoga loft in Tampa. That's actually, it, it's an Ebor. And um, I went to a class and the girl that taught it, her, her name happens to be Ashley as well. Cool. Um, the woman that she's a studio owner as well. And the class was so good. It was like, it was what my spirit, what my soul, what my everything needed. And um, I was hooked from that point on. And then somebody mentioned um, yoga teacher training. So I went searching for um, a training and sure enough, they had one coming up. So I signed up, signed up for it. And then I was off to the races. But what brought me to teaching was trying to get out of this postpartum depression funk. Um, because I was like knee deep in some, some craziness. I needed, um, my own form of therapy, if you will. And the reason I went the yoga route too, is because I didn't want to be medicated. I still had young kids to take care of. Um, I still had, my son was, he's, he's three now. So he was like one, not even one when I started this adventure. And I, um, I didn't want to be medicated. I didn't want to be a zombie. I didn't want to get hooked on something. You know, all those crazy horror stories that you hear when it comes to meds. So um, I went the yoga route, and it is probably the best thing that I, best decision that I've made aside from having my children. (laughs) So... Oh, that's awesome. You know, you speaking about postpartum depression, it kind of leads into uh, the other aspect of yoga I want to talk about that people sometimes forget about the wisdom behind yoga. Uh, Beyond fitness, there is a lot of wisdom that actually has been very life-saving for a -hmm. lot of people just from going to a yoga class. So a little bit about how, you know, yoga has, what has it taught you and how did it help you through uh, dealing with postpartum depression? Um, it taught me that I had more control than I was willing to give myself credit for and that I was willing to accept um, that I had that I bared more responsibility in the situation and the way things were and that I could be the catalyst for change in my own life. Um, it got me closer to my God, whatever that looks like for me. Uh, I have never prayed more in my adult life than I did on that yoga mat right. um, and still do. Um, it gave me a perspective that we are truly responsible for the people that we are and the way that we exist on this planet. Um, it also gave me a perspective of no one has dominion over your feelings, that they are yours and yours alone. Um, even when it's a- even when someone makes you angry, that they are not responsible for your anger. You are. No one can make you anything that you aren't already, you know, choosing to be. So that's pretty much what I learned in terms of um, taking on yoga and taking it on from a spiritual standpoint. I I pray hard. I am by by religious upbringing. I, I would say I'm a, a Christian for all intents and purposes. Um, 
but my conversations with God are, are between me and God. I don't necessarily feel like I have to have the church behind me to do that. I feel like it's my responsibility to tap into my spirituality. And I do that through my yoga practice. And one of the biggest things that I've got from yoga and the spiritual aspect of it is that I have control over that.